Today we're going to be reviewing this Orient Power lithium iron phosphate battery. 100 amp hours, 12 volt, it's a 4S. Let's get into it. All right, here we go on the internet. It says that it has a 100 max continuous discharge current and 50 max continuous charging current. Suggested 14.6 charger. Oh, that's funny, that's what I charge them to. Uh, for life of a dollar battery. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's take a look at these cells. Okay, so here we go. That's what it looks like. It's a pretty nice square box with this uh, blue shrink that we get with the batteries. It's got nice wire here, uh, seven American wire gauge, right? And it's nice silicon cable. So this, yeah, this is gonna be good for a hundred amps, I think. Yeah, hundred amps, maybe. Yeah, it should be, it should be good for a hundred amps. Um, I estimate that it's probably gonna be the same cells, these four cells, 100 amp hours, inside, right? Plus, it's got some foam, probably. It probably has some foam in there, uh, and then the BMS unit, right? And so, that's why, even though they're the same batteries, they are, well, bigger, right? It's just all, all kinds of fluff in here. It feels soft. So, of course, I tested these way back, I don't know, a few months ago, and these came out to exactly 100 amp hours, which uh, then, no surprise, these did exactly the same. They came out to exactly 100 amp hours, and then my equipment shut off, right? So, let's take this apart and see what's inside and then see what BMS they're using. And let's see what, what we can find inside. Okay, so it's time to test the capacity of this battery. We have a quick setup here. It's just going through this meter, which is the one that I always use. And then it's gonna go through this 2000 watt uh inverter and then from there our loads are gonna be uh various uh fans there we go this one it's a fan we have another one and then even the this lights right here so it's gonna be about two three hundred watts of uh load it's gonna take a while but let's see how much uh we're gonna get basically here we are i've removed 29 watt hours so far and that number is gonna keep growing. All right, let's see how good it does. All right, it's about time here. Oh my God, it's 22 amps just to keep this alive boys look at that a hundred amp hours all right let's take it apart Look at this here first. These are some really beefy bus bars here. I mean, these are nice. Much better, I think, than the uh, the previous ones that I've gotten were were these cable here. Which, by the way, it's not. Ah, uh, is it? Yeah, it's not even this seven gauge uh, cable. This is probably more like eight. Or 10 gauge? No, nah, probably 8 gauge. This is this is probably 8 gauge cable. Now these are proper big beefy bus bars. Uh, maybe 
too too much maybe too big right but bigger is always better all right let's look at that bms though i want to see that bms okay so another thing to notice here is it's got the connections for the leads here which is pretty cool this one's this one yeah this is pretty neat uh that you're using captain tape which is good because this can handle you know hundreds of degrees um they're using captain tape to put the cells together huh look at that almost the same as i did here wait a minute did i do this or did they do it i don't remember hmm i want to say i did but maybe not maybe that that's the way it came and then obviously bam the start of the show here is this giant beefy bms Ooh, all right here's another thing that i see that i like is the whenever they use this goo here as annoying as it is for us when we're messing with it and playing and taking it apart this is a good idea because it will mean that if you put this battery and use it in a place where there's a lot of vibrations then this is much much less likely to come apart to come out right and so then that is a good thing that is a very good thing and then the other thing that i like is the fact that it's got a thermistor here which should probably be here on the battery uh touching the battery and that way it will trigger uh the bms to turn itself off in the event that the cells are too hot oh yeah there we go look at this bms now that is some proper chunky bms that is pretty massive a big giant heat sink right here a massive cork uh three sixteenths quarter inch yeah, three sixteenths uh aluminum heat sink there that means that it will take a while for this to saturate right the heat for it to saturate and so it's gonna be good okay here we go look at those traces look at that that is really crazy see each one of those is for a cable right you can use up to four cables here they only use one ain't that so crazy i have a feeling this thing is capable of so much more i know that this is one of these bms's that is it's you know kind of universal or it's for more cells right so one two three four that this is only populated with four sections here uh which means that it's for a 4s but this same pcb could be populated for up to let me see four five six seven eight nine ten this is able to populate with up to 15s right for for uh, a 48 volt uh battery or like in this case with a 4s you know lithium iron phosphate and then have this uh, as a 12 volt thing well, this is very, very impressive. Okay, so let's look at this number. I P010. Nah, that doesn't come up with anything. That's just a... Uh... Okay, so since there's no identifying numbers on this thing, there's not much that I can find out about this, right? This number here didn't bring anything up. So... Uh, the only thing that that I have to do is maybe I think what we can I can do is open it up and then we can see what kind of MOSFETs it's got and how many MOSFETs it has in there and then we can calculate what is, this thing is capable right As, of course the the thing the manufacturer of this battery pack says that this is rated at a hundred amps but it seems like it's a bit beefy it seems like this is overbuilt for a hundred amps and maybe it is and maybe that's they say it's a hundred just to be sure that they will never have problems which is in you know in the long run a good thing so let's see i think this will be fairly simple all we have to do is remove four screws here let's bring the drill tools here that just broke it
two out of the four screws basically gave up and <laughs> said no thank you. Okay, here we go, here we go. That wasn't too bad. Oh man, that's really dry. Yeah, this seems very dry, like it doesn't have enough of that paste. I might recoat that when I put it back together. Oh, here we go. There are some letters in here. So it says LWS 15S 400 amp dash 406 and then it's got the size of the actual board so this is what it, this is capable right this could be a 400 amp uh bms now it's not configured for that because obviously it's not it doesn't have all the mosfets so if you were to fill in all these mosfets then that's what it would be there we go we just took a picture so h y 4306 description and channel enhancement mode 60 volt uh, 230 amps typical at VGS equals 10 volts TO-22 or 220 applications switching application this is exactly how they're using power management for inverter systems the gate source voltage is 25 maximum junction temperature is 175 is diode continuous forward current and that's 230 amps holds control hmm okay so there's a lot of stuff here that i don't understand right um but I'm seeing 60 volts. Here we go. VSD diode forward voltage, 115 amps. Okay, so maybe these are about 100 amp uh, MOSFETs, right? Okay, so let's see here. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, so that means this would be capable, but I'm sure that's not how it works. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that know more than me about this um this seems like a super beefy setup here obviously this this heat sink here is a a big deal i've never seen such a beefy heat sink on a bms before especially kind of this quality um i'm impressed by the fact that they use this and then they derate it uh so basically this Heat sink here is capable of dissipating whatever heat is generated at 400 amps, right? Now, again, the manufacturer says that this is rated at 100 amps. And if that's the case, then this has more than enough heat dissipation, which means that this BMS will run pretty cool and pretty reliably, right? And so this is a pretty cool thing. Let's put this aside for, for a minute. Yeah, so you're looking at 1,280 watt hours. So 1.2, almost 1.3 kilowatt hours, right, on this guy here. And this size and this weight, this is pretty impressive. Uh, let's see here. So 17 pounds, 12 ounces. That means it's 8 kilos. Okay, so here we go. It's 160 watt hours per kilogram. This is a chemistry that is super safe and super long lasting. It lasts thousands of cycles, right? And at 160 watt hours per kilogram, that is pretty dense. Way denser than a lithium iron phosphate from years past. So this is pretty cool. And then the fact that it is coupled or packaged with a very, very beefy BMS, uh, I'd say this is a pretty cool uh, and compelling product, right? Uh, yes, expensive. It's about 600 bucks, I think, for this pack right here. I'm impressed with this with this battery pack. Now, next video, I will show you how to build something. And most likely, we won't use that BMS because what I want to do is I want to use uh, all eight of these cells to build a 24 volt system because you know I don't I'm not really into the 12 volt systems but I know a lot of you guys are I'm just not and so I would want to build this right here 24 volts so stay tuned for the 24 volts thank you for watching this video see you guys in the next one bye